The organs and tissues of organisms, large and small, are made of cells. Cells are like building blocks, stacking and connecting in three dimensions to build up the structures that make a heart a heart, a muscle a muscle, a liver a liver, and so on. For almost 400 years, scientists have used microscopes to learn how cells fit together within tissues. In the last two decades, technologies like DNA and RNA sequencing have also taught scientists a lot about how cells work. And thanks to a technology called single-cell RNA sequencing, scientists are even learning what makes individual cells within the same organ unique, and see how cells that look similar under a microscope can be vastly different at the molecular and genetic level. The thing is, for something like single-cell RNA sequencing to work, scientists have to break a tissue up into its individual cells. That means that they lose any sense of where a given cell was and who it was sitting next to in a tissue. All that spatial information is lost, which is a huge problem because a cell's location in a tissue or organ is really important. It influences what the cell does, what state it's in, which cells it interacts with, and the signals it picks up from its surroundings. This is where a new family of technologies called spatial omics comes in, an area of research for exploring the molecular composition of cells within their native tissue. Some spatial omics methods use unique bits of DNA to pinpoint cells' locations within a sample before breaking it up. Others can even individually sequence every cell in a tissue without breaking it up at all. Either way, spatial omics goes beyond traditional microscopy and sequencing technologies, which helps scientists better understand how organs and tissues work, map complex organs like the brain in greater detail, learn what goes on in cancers and other diseases, and see how small changes in single cells can have a big impact on biology, health, and disease.